Does your holding company need an operating agreement? This is one of those ones that came in via viewer question, which we always welcome. So maybe you, like the viewer, are wondering, does my holding company need an operating agreement? We're going to talk about that today. Obviously, we're talking about it very generally. If you want specific advice for your specific situation, you need to consult an attorney licensed in your jurisdiction. But in general terms, yes, holding companies should have their own operating documents, their own agreements, whether that's corporation documents or in the case of an LLC, an operating or LLC agreement. One of the versions of this question asked whether it could be one joint agreement for the parent and the subsidiary. You're generally not going to want to do that. What you want to do is hold up the legal structure of these entities. And while I hate to use the word fiction, essentially entities are legal fictions. The court systems, the law treats them as legal persons. They're created by our statutes, our legal system, etc. So an LLC is recognized as being a legal entity separate and distinct from its owner. It is in many cases, a legal person. It can contract, it can own assets. So this same type of analysis holds for the parent and the subsidiary, the holding company. Now, when we talk on videos here on the channel about setting up your LLC, setting up your corporation, we talk about having documentation and separating it from the owners. We've done a number of videos where we talked about liability issues, issues being passed back and forth, whether we have that separateness, whether we're keeping the bank account separate between a person and their LLC or their corporation. And the same type of analysis is going to apply to a multi-entity structure. So if we have a parent and a subsidiary, same deal. Are the parent and subsidiary being treated as separate companies? Do they have contracts and agreements? Do they have separate checking accounts? Do they interface with each other like separate companies, right? Do they transfer assets back and forth informally, or do they actually do bills of sales and other things? So what we want to think about when we're thinking about that parent and subsidiary is how do we treat them like independent companies? And that leads directly to the answer, which is in general – Yes, that holding company should have an operating agreement, right? It needs to have its own LLC formed. It needs to have its own tax number, probably its own tax returns. And then, of course, that leads up to its having its own agreement, maybe its own officers and directors, its own amendments. All of that stuff is going to happen at the holding company as well. So hope that's helpful. We love the viewer questions, so keep them coming and the comments. Of course, don't put anything confidential in there because – other people can see that. For confidential conversations, reach out to an attorney licensed in your jurisdiction. And I hope you subscribe to the channel for more tips. I am really looking forward to reading comments from those of you that can drop them below. Thanks.